film about my dad. Whoa, that's not him. That's him. Because I know that dad doesn't like talking about the emotional stuff, I told him that this was a film about his hobbies. Of course, he got all excited and started rolling the Ducati out of the garage for its first exclusive appearance on camera. He even told me that he'd been writing music with his friend Chris and that I could use their song for my film. But then I found out that the lyrics were go away, go away, go away, which didn't quite go with the theme of the film. Of course, Dad thought otherwise. So while he was happy going through the ins and outs of the 12 bar blues, speedway racing and fly fishing, I made a documentary film. Not so much about his hobbies, but about the impact he's had on me without even knowing it. And that brings us back to the emotional stuff. Sorry, Dad. So let's rewind way back to the 80s, when my dad looked like this, to find out what my old man was like back in the day, before he had me to worry about. Way back. In your youth, what were you like? Well, I was quite old when I met your mother. I was already 31 years old. Okay. Well, that's not really youth. Okay, but, but before that? Before that. I was just very much into my speedway racing and that was entailed travelling all around the country with my best mates who one of them was a very good professional rider and I have to admit I wasn't, I used to crash as much as I used to finish. <laughs> you got to have that in, you got to have that in. <laughs> meeting different people and it was a fantastic life and they just happened to live in a house which was lovely with a swimming pool so in the summer between speedway meetings we could go in the swimming pool and it was fantastic that was my happiest memories so it turns out my dad was a motorbike stud well he tried to be well, I, I wanted to be like the American riders they all had blonde hair yeah. I didn't realize they all bleached it themselves I thought they were natural but they weren't you yours? Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on from the 80s to the year 1992, Mum was pregnant, but my real father, John Rose, left before I was born. So when I popped out in 1993, it was just me and Mum for a little while. Then, Mum met my dad-to-be, Dave. <laughs> I first saw him walking up towards Shine Water School okay. and I was taking you kids to school and I was right behind him and I won't ever forget it because he was dressed in denim and he had blonde streaky shoulder length hair and I thought he was absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> I watched his bum all the way up the hill. <laughs> and that was the first time I saw him. I saw him again in, this, in the actual sports centre, Shine Water Sports Centre. And every time I used to go in with my friend to do kick fit, he used to bounce out of his chair to serve me. And then I didn't see him for a very long time after that. Yeah, I remember in the community centre, but she thinks that I used to jump up to serve her, but absolutely no more than any other pretty women that were there at the time. <laughs> It wasn't long before Mum introduced Dave to me. So in the year 1994, when I was about one and a half, I met my dad for the first time. Little did I know that we would end up being two peas in a pod. So um, I'm imagining he probably met you in the daytime. I do remember him laughing because you had yoghurt all around your face and your high chair and he took some pictures of that or you could see these huge blue eyes and all this yoghurt in mess around your mouth. And I was telling him to wait until I wiped your face and he thought it was hilarious so he just took the pictures anyway, which I've still got somewhere. But yeah, he took to you straight away and um, you know, it was, it was just, it was quite a uh, straightforward thing because he already knew about you. You realised that you know you hadn't been calling him daddy, and we asked you if you wanted to call him daddy or you wanted to call him Dave, and he said, and you said daddy, 
and that's how that started. It was just a natural thing because your own dad, as you know, never saw you, so it was a natural thing. Yeah, I made sure you knew from being very little because I think, well, my own experience, I didn't find out my dad wasn't my dad till I was 14. And it really shocked the hell out of me. And it took me a long time to get over that. Because at the end of the day, it's a lie. And it's a lie that's been going on for a very long time with people you think you can trust, your parents. So I didn't want that for you. I wanted you to know from the start. So he joined me, mum, my sister and my brother and became part of our little family. And I finally had a dad. It was, in some ways, it, it was um, quite difficult because we were just dating, we weren't living together. So if we had a split up, then it used to be feel awful because that was your dad. Um, but there were really difficult times we had to get through and uh, we, we've done it, as you know. But yeah, it, it was very difficult. And also the fact I had older children as well. And as you know, your brother took to Dave straight away, whereas your sister was very hostile and couldn't accept him. Um, but then she was like that with everybody, it wasn't just your dad, it was just um, the way she was. So there was a heck of a lot of stuff going on really. Um, you know, two children pre-teenage and a, a, a little girl just starting school. It was, um, you know, quite difficult to, to give everybody attention and try and get a relationship off the ground. In 1998, when I was five years old, my brother and sister went away to live with their dad so then five became three. But things did work out between mum and dad. And between me and dad, well, things couldn't have been better. And if I remember right, I used to get you to ride your pink bike that I brought you, your push bike, to do trials as well, to see if you could go around the same course without putting your foot down. I do remember, and you had little rocks. I remember yeah. you had rocks out, or they probably had rocks in the garden anyway. That was to mark the course and yeah, so trying to. I did you do well? I think you did very well, yeah. <laughs> Dad even let me hold his guitar, though I never had the patience to learn how to play. I'd sing along to his 12-bar blues instead, and we'd perform our own rendition of Twinkle Little Star. I think the worst thing he ever did is when I went to go to a pantomime, and we're waiting, queuing in door, in the, in doors in this community hall for tickets, and he said to you that you'd have to wait outside in the dark because there was only enough tickets for me and him and your brother and sister to go in and you were only about three and your little chin wobbled and your little... That was so cruel and I really was very angry about that because I thought <laughs> that poor kid could have nightmares about that and he just laughing his head off and you didn't, you weren't old enough to understand. So I very quickly reassured you. And the next... 20 years on and I'm the biggest daddy's girl. I listen intently to his exciting stories. I bring out his inner child and I look after his high cholesterol. So mum, this is pressure on you now. Oh if God. you could describe me and dad in three words, <laughs> what would you say? Losers, losers, losers. <laughs> right, we'll do a take two on that. Mum, if you could describe me and dad in In April 2004, mum and dad got hitched. They've been married 10 whole years now and it's definitely one of the happiest memories I have. And over the past 20 years, well, Dad has been by my side teaching me everything I need to know. And I know that I'll never go looking for John, because I have a dad right here. His name is David, and he changed my world when he became part of it in the year 1994. Yeah.